the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Blind Justice. It is 5.45 a.m., March 6, 1940. Pete Salverson, owner of a roadside cafe in West Texas, is opening for business. As he sweeps up in the kitchen, he hears a sound outside the back door. Somebody out back there? That's you, Charlie? Well, what's the matter, boy? Where'd you come from? Come on, feller. Come on, I ain't gonna hurt you. Had <laughs> a boy. Looks like you got here too early to root for anything out of that garbage can, though. And them ribs of yours look like you could use some grub fast. <laughs> hey, now, 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 none of that face licking. You just come on inside and I'll fix you up. Come on. Come on. Let's uh, see. How about this? That is bone and a couple of hunks of stew meat, huh? <laughs> All right, fella. There you are. Dig into that. <laughs> oh, boy, you sure are beat up and hungry. What's this contraption you got strapped on you? Uh, Pete, you open yet? Oh, oh, howdy, Sheriff. How's the coffee situation? Well, it ain't brewed yet, but I can fix you some up in a minute. Had an early customer here. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't got any money. I'm a cash customer. <laughs> now, where'd you get him? Oh, he's rooting in the garbage cans out back. What you doing up and around so early? Oh, I just came back from Huntsville. Delivered a prisoner up there yesterday. Yeah? Hey, this would be a pretty good-looking dog if he was taken care of. Who owns him? I don't know. Never seen him before. Never did see a leash like the one he's wearing, neither. Kind of funny contraption. Look at it. Hey, well, let's see that. What's the matter, Sheriff? Why, this ain't a leash. It's a harness. Huh? This here dog's a C&I dog. One of them dogs is trained to lead blind people? Sure is. He must have run off from his master, then. Well, these dogs don't run off, Pete. I had a missing person's bulletin on a blind man three days ago. This might be his dog. Well, the guy that's missing must be around here, then, huh? Well, if he is, something must have happened to him. This dog never would have left him. Say, you got change for a dollar in the register? Oh, sure thing. I'm going to hit that phone and get a ranger down here to help. Wherever that dog's master is, I got a hunch we'd better find him quick. Less than one hour after the sheriff's appeal for help, Texas Ranger Jace Pearson joined him at Pete Salveson's roadside cafe. Well, there he is, Ranger. No mistake in that harness if you ever seen one before. It's a C&I dog, all right. You say you found him outside this morning, Salverson? Yeah, half starved, like you can see. Been a good three or four days since he's eaten from the looks of him. Easy, boy. Come here. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, fella. It's really sore, isn't it? He's had a bad time, Sheriff. Got a pretty hard clip on the head. Must have been knocked out. Since then, he's traveled through some rough country. And well, late, your gear's got him all sliced up. Foot pads are sore from walking. Yeah, but ever since Pete fed him, he's been yelling to get out of here. Reckon he'll be able to lead us back to his master? He'll try if he can make it. He'll have a better chance if a veterinarian works him over first. Where's the nearest one? Uh, foreman at the Wolverine Ranch is a vet. Want to take him out there? Yeah. Meanwhile, you better get yourself a horse. I'll leave my horse trailer here until I get back. You can load your mount in with my horse charcoal. It's a double trailer. What makes you think we'll need horses? In a country this dog came through isn't the kind we'll be able to get through in a car. And he came too far for us to follow on foot. Lost dogs sometimes head for home, Jace. Missing persons bulletin came from Ozona in Crockett County. Dog may be headed for there. Only way we'll find out is to follow him. If he heads any other way, it'll be back toward the man he's been trained to take care of. I'm figuring that'll be in a southerly direction from here. Well, how do you know that? 
All barren country that way, full of lechiguilla. If he came such a long way from any other direction, he'd have run into a town or a ranch and been found before this. I reckon I'll buy that. That makes sense. Get your horse. I'll meet you back here, and we'll drive as far south as we can cross country and then turn this dog loose and follow him. I got the dog patched up at the Wolverine Ranch, picked up the sheriff and his horse, and headed south into the Badlands. We switched from car to our horses and turned the dog loose. He circled around for a moment, got his bearings, and then, despite the soreness of his body, started into a limping run. He's heading south, all right, Jace. Must be going to his master. Beats me why he went all the way to Peach Place, though. He had to go someplace for help. But the only thought he gave to himself was just stopping long enough to be fed before he headed back here. How far do you reckon we'll have to go? Well, we came 14 miles by car before the dirt road petered out. He came a lot farther than that. Might have taken him a couple of days. Well, we'll have to stop him at night. If he keeps going that long and tie him off. We better make sure we can catch him before dark so he don't get away from us altogether. Uh, chances are he'll wait for us. After all, we're the help he came after. If he doesn't, we'll be able to follow him anyhow. In the dark? Yeah. I treated his collar with some phosphorus paint. Hey, whatever made you think of that? Uh, trick my father taught me a long time ago. He had an old hound dog, great hunter. Got a throat injury and couldn't sound off. Glowing collar made up for it. Well, like they say, we live and learn. <laughs> hey, look. Look where the dog's cutting, up in the foothills. Yeah. That's Ambush Canyon that way, isn't it? Sure is. See, no wonder that dog's so beat up. I wouldn't tackle this country in an army tank if I didn't have to. I wonder if that blind fellow will be alive when we find him. I don't think so, Sheriff. If he was alive, I don't think the dog would ever have left him. Come on, Charky. Stop. What kept that dog going, I'll never know. We hit stretches where we had to lead the horses on foot. It was toward sundown of the second day when the dog caved in. He made a feeble attempt to inch along on his stomach and then just rolled over on his side, panting. He's done for, Jace. Can't even take water. I, I better... No, Sheriff. Put your gun away. But, Jace, he couldn't move another inch if he wanted to. I'll carry him with me on charcoal. Man would be mighty lucky if he could find a human being that'd go this far for him. Uh, he'd never have led us this far back if you hadn't had the vet work on him. Well, what do we do now? Keep on going, I guess. If his master is in here, he must have left some trail. We'll keep cutting through till we find marks. Jace, now how would a blind man get into this country and why? I don't know. But if he wasn't here, the dog wouldn't have been here either. We better move on till we find a good spot to make camp. These horses need some attention on the night of rest, too. Meantime, maybe I can do a little doctrine on the dog. Won't do any good, Jace. All you'll need is a pack shovel. He just stopped breathing. He's dead. The next morning, we started trail cutting, working steadily to the south, toward the international border, the Rio Grande. Yeah, the country's getting a mite better now, Jace, but we're only about a half a mile from the river. If anybody else had been in here recently, we'd have seen some sign of a trail. Nobody could come through here without leaving some kind of tracks. That dog didn't head this way for nothing, Sheriff. He must have... Hey, hold it a second. Huh? What is it? Look at this. Dog hair caught in this thorn brush. Yeah. Must have been a few days ago when the dog headed out. Look at the color. German Shepherd, all right. We're still in the right trail, then. But why no human tracks? Well, the dog came out of here on foot. But this may not be the way he and his master got in here originally. What other way is there? On the river, in a raft, or a flat-bottom boat? Well, how could a blind man navigate the river? He didn't have to be alone, Sheriff. That dog was beaten on the head, remember? It isn't likely his master did that, is it? No, I see what you mean, but how... Now, would... Wait a minute. Look up ahead there, along the side of the ridge, about a quarter of a mile. Yeah, looks like part of the rock and the earth have been scooped out. Mm. Must have been a little landslide. Not on a rock facing as solid as that looks. What do you suppose it is, then? Let's find out. It took us more than an hour to reach the base of the ridge and find the answer. It wasn't a landslide. There were a couple of dynamite caps on the ground. The fresh earth had been blown out. 
Uh, two men, all right, Jace. Signs of tracks held tight in this fresh earth. Dog tracks go right along with the one set. That was the blind man. Yeah, another mark running in with those tracks, though. Little round hole in the ground every few steps. Uh, blind man must have had a cane, too. Move around the wide circle and cut back to this spot until... Oh, wait, Jace. Hmm? What's that thing over there by the brush? Long white piece or something. A white cane. Come on. Ahead of its stain, Jace. Looks like blood. Yeah, it is. A dog must have been clubbed with that. Uh, blood stains didn't come from the dog, Sheriff. Lump he had on his head didn't bleed. <laughs> Let's beat through this brush. Blood trail on the ground through here, Jace. Yeah. That path just ahead seems to be pressed down in one spot. Let's make for it. A man's body, all right. Face down. Better roll him over and see if it's a blind man. It's him, all right. You can tell by his right hand. Callous ridge there from holding onto that dog harness. I took the white cane and the dynamite caps and rode along the shore of the river to the nearest town. Called Austin to fly a lab man down and arrange for a boat to pick up the sheriff and the body. I was in the local constable's office 24 hours later when the body was brought into town. Well... Body's over at the undertaker, Jace. Good. Constable told me you were in here looking over a report from your lab man. Yeah. No lead on the dynamite caps, but we learned plenty from the cane. Two sets of prints, one unidentified. Must have been the blind man's. Now, what about the other set? Man who left the other set had a criminal record. Name was James Waterman. Got out of Huntsville six years ago. Waterman? Say, I, I remember that name. You ought to remember it. He pulled ten years for armed robbery. Forty thousand dollar payroll stick up back in twenty four. Money never was recovered. I wonder why he killed that blind man. And why was he blasting in the face of that rock ridge? Something we'll ask him when we get him. Oh, was the lab man at the funeral home when you brought the body in? Yeah, he's going over it now. Want to get some grub while you're waiting for him to finish? Yeah. You take prints off the body to compare with the ones he lifted from the cane. He'll have identification established by the time we get through. Good. Let's go. I'll be glad to eat something I haven't had to cook myself. <laughs> You know, funny thing, we started off so fast after that dog turned up the other day, I never did check that missing persons bulletin for the blind man's name. His name was Joseph Wilson. Lived in a rooming house in Ozona, operated a newsstand. Landlady reported him missing when she didn't see him or the dog for two days. Now, there's a cafe across the street. Good. We took our time. A statewide pickup was out for James Waterman, and it seemed just a matter of pinning him down. But when we got finished and walked over to the funeral home, the case wasn't so simple. Our lab man, Marty Ferris, was just finishing a phone conversation. No, I said there's no doubt about it. Yeah, check on it. Pearson just walked in. I'll tell him. Right. Bye. Howdy, Jason. Howdy, Marty. Marty Ferris, Sheriff Ritchie. Sure, we met I... when the sheriff came in with the body. And, Jace, we got trouble. This thing is blown wide open. Why? What's the matter? That's the prints. And take a look at them. Now, here's a copy of the unidentified set I sent on to Austin. Now, the man who made them has no record. Well, why should he have a record? Aren't they the blind man's prints? Uh, no, they aren't, Jace. The prints on the body match the known prints pulled from the cane. The dead man is James Waterman. What? <laughs> That's it, Sheriff. Here, yeah, look at the prints. See for yourself. Marty, could you have made a mistake? No, Jace. I just checked with Austin on the phone by classification number. Waterman must have been blinded sometime after he left Huntsville. He took the name of Wilson as an alias. Uh, now all we've got is a set of unidentified prints that might match anybody in the state. Sheriff, our killer isn't going to be easy to find. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Blind Justice, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Whoever the blind man's companion had been, there had to be a starting point for their journey along the river, a place where they'd picked up a boat or a raft. The sheriff and I worked our way along the river above the town, questioning the occasional Mexicans who managed somehow to make a living where no living was to be made. And in one spot, less than a mile from the road, we found something. You can see it clearly now, Jace. Yeah. Impression of a flat-bottomed boat on that mud flat. Had to be dragged quite a ways to the water. Not many days ago, either. Oh, oh, boy. 
Mud around where the boat was is caked dry. Spot where the boat was setting still looks damp. Uh-huh. Boat must have been there without being used for quite some time. River's been way down for more than a year. A little smoke coming up from behind those trees. Must be a Mexican hut. Whoever's there might own the boat. Let's ask him. Get up, Charlie. Oh, Come boy. Mmm, tacos cooking. Smell him? Yeah, smell something else, too. Chicken frying. There's a place. I can see it now. Yeah, pretty high class for River Hut. Looking back, chicken coop. Kind of new, too. Coop wire, I mean. Hasn't been up very long. Yeah, a woman out in front of the place. Well, she sees us. Buenos dias, senor. Oh, buenos dias, senora. Whoa, whoa, Charlie. Oh, boy. Maybe you can help us out, senora. We'd like some information about a boat that was out on that mud flat until a few days ago. I never see a boat there, senor. You never saw one there? Now, what made that impression in the mud, then? I, I called my husband. He speaks better English. Hmm. Daniel? Menga? Yes. What the matter? You don't let me sleep. They know something about that boat, all right, Jace. Yeah. My husband... Chico. Uh, uh, hey, you want something, senor? They want to know. There's a mark left by a boat down in that mud flat. When was the boat there last? And what happened to it? Hey, it was maybe a week ago. The boat disappeared in the night. One morning, she's gone. That's all I know. Who took it? We don't know. Mm, just like that, huh? Si, si. Just gone. Don't try to feed us a story like that. You... Now, just a second, Sheriff. Where do you work, Danielle? What do you do for a living? Well, uh, I do anything for whoever give me the work. But for a long time, nobody give me any. You must have saved a lot of money to be eating fried chicken and tacos. Where'd you get those chickens? I, I raised them, senor. Yeah, without hens and a rooster? There isn't anything in that coop old enough to sit a nest. And that coop wire is new. Well, what I mean to say, I, I, I was just starting to raise them. Where'd you get the money to buy that coop wire and the chicks? You better talk up. This is part of a murder investigation. Murder? Blind man was murdered downriver. He got there by boat. Oh, you... Senor, I, I got nothing to do with murder. I just sell the boat. Why didn't you say so before? Well, because the boat was not mine. But you sold it just the same. Say, si, say, si. look, I tell you the truth. The boat is there for two years, ever since we come here. I never know who owns it, and then one day the... The men come. Uh, two men? Si, sí, si. Sí. Uh, one of them blind? Si, sí, si. Sí. He got a dog and a white stick. He, the other man with him, he said to me, I give you $50 for the boat. Well, uh, I don't say that the boat is mine. I, I just let him give me $50. What the man look like? The one who could see? Oh, he's big, just like you, with the light hair, uh, very wavy, eyes uh, uh, blue. Uh, he said that when they come back, I can have the boat back for nada, uh, nothing. And he gave me more money if I don't tell nobody. I say, uh, you give me more now, but he said he don't have no more until he come back. That's the whole truth, senor, just like Daniel tell you. All right. If it isn't the truth, we'll find out. Come on, Sheriff, let's go. All right. Uh, you two stay right around here in case we want to see you again. Oh, we'll, we'll be here. We'll be here. We don't run away. Up, boy. Hey. Uh, heading back for the town? Yeah. Marty may have some more information. And I think we just got a lead from Danielle on why Waterman and the other man went downriver. Well, if you did, you got something I missed. I promised Danielle more money when they came back. The money Waterman got in that stick-up 16 years ago never was recovered, remember? Oh, oh, I get it. That's why they dynamited into that rock ridge. Waterman must have hidden that money until it cooled off. That's right. But before he ever got back to it, he was caught and sent to Huntsville for 10 years. Well, why didn't he go for it as soon as he got out six years ago? That's one of the things we still don't know. Maybe Marty will have the answers when we get back to town. Marty had the answers, all right. Reports from Austin that had come in while we were on the river. I made notes on everything, Jace, if you can read my writing. Oh, thanks. A check back shows that Waterman lost his sight three days after he left Huntsville six years ago. Now, it's hard to run down because he didn't have to report to anybody. He'd served his full term, no parole. I see. Happened in a highway accident, huh? Yeah, I caught a lift on a gasoline truck, went over an embankment and caught fire. The driver was killed, Waterman blinded. Near Sonora. That means Waterman was headed this way from the pen. He was going straight for that money, Sheriff. But losing his sight stopped him. But why did it take him six years to move for it again? He had to find somebody to help him. 
A man with a load of stolen money hidden away doesn't trust many people. He finally trusted somebody. Mm. And got killed for it. I'm going to take a ride to Ozona. It's out of your county, Sheriff, but it's your case. You want to come along? You bet I want to come along. Let's go. In Ozona, we went to the rooming house where Waterman had lived under the name of Joseph Wilson. The landlady showed us to his room. It hadn't been rented to anybody else, and his things were still there. A few books in Braille, clothing, an extra harness for the dog. Everything is just like he left it, just like it was when the police come after I called them. I haven't touched a thing. No money, nothing valuable was left here, only what you see. It's all right, ma'am. Don't be upset. Nobody accused you of taking anything. I just want you to know there wasn't nothing to take. He never had nothing. Always a couple of weeks behind in his rent. Not that I minded. I had nothing but sympathy for the poor man. Even fed his dog for him or never would have been fed. Look, something you just said is important to me. Now, if he owes you money, there's nobody to pay it, so you're, you're just going to lose it. The truth can't hurt you one way or the other. Did he really owe you rent money? Why, yes. Why else would I say it? Every once in a while, he'd catch up. He'd got some kind of benefit checks from someplace once in a while. What's your angle there, Jay? I'm just figuring, Sheriff. Daniel got $50 for that boat he sold. There must have been more expenses getting from here down there. Somebody had to finance it. His traveling companion, whoever it was. Yeah. It's a cinch it was somebody Waterman met and got to know right here in Ozona. Ma'am, did Mr. Waterman, uh, Mr. Wilson, have any visitors here? Any friends? No, I never saw a soul. There was some fellow called him a few times, though, when he was homesick and couldn't work at the newsstand. You know who it was? No, he never gave me his name. Mr. Wilson just said it was somebody he knew from the stand. The same fellow each time? As far as I could tell from the voice. I see. Thanks. Come on, Sheriff. Was that all you want here? Yeah, thanks. We located the place where Waterman had had his newsstand, a main intersection near a bank, a restaurant, an office building, and a medical and professional building. Somebody else was running the stand now. We staked out in my car across the street. Looking for somebody fitting the description Danielle gave us? That's right. Man who called whenever Waterman was sick might have been a regular customer. There could be quite a few customers fitting that description, Jase. We'll tag the ones who come close. See if the newsie or anybody around has any information on him. Somebody might have noticed the man we're looking for hanging around the stand from time to time. If he knew Waterman well enough to call his rooming house, he knew him well enough to stop for a talk. You're right, of course, but this kind of waiting wears me out. It's the dullest part of the job, Sheriff, but sometimes it's the part that pays off. Two days, we watched the corner. Occasionally, we followed a man who fitted the description supplied by Danielle. But each time we checked, the subject turned out to be somebody who hadn't been out of town. Then, just before the end of our second day of watching, I nudged the sheriff. What is it, Jase? Over there. No, past the newsstand. Just going into the medical and professional building. Oh, yeah. He looks like he might be the boy, all right. His hair is really light and curly, which most of the others haven't been. Let's see where he went. Oh, oh, wait a minute. He's still in the lobby. There by the elevator. Let's wait until he's picked up. There's the elevator now. Well, there it goes. He's the only passenger. Come on. Watch the floor marker. See where the elevator stops. Third floor, Jase. Yeah, let's take a look at the building directory on the wall. Third floor, two doctors, a dentist, an attorney, and a chiropodist. Go up to that floor. Try them all. You want me to grab him? No. If you spot him in a waiting room, just sit down like you're waiting, too. After he leaves, find out anything you can about him. I'll wait back in the car and tag him after he comes out. How do we get together again? After I find out where he lives, I'll come back and pick you up on the corner. I waited for the man with the light curly hair. He came out of the building in 20 minutes. I started my car away from the curb slowly, keeping him in sight. He turned the corner and got into a car of his own, drove to an apartment building. I noted the address and then went back and met the sheriff. I hope you didn't lose him, Jace. I think he's the one we want. Why? What'd you get? He was in to see a doctor. Had a dressing on his arm changed. Doc said he's a regular patient who's been away on vacation. Been out of town, huh? Yeah, but that isn't all. 
It's what he's being treated for that ought to make you sit up. Dog bite. Dog bite? <laughs> I thought that shepherd might have gotten to the killer just once before he was knocked out. Let's go visit him. I know the apartment building he lives in. You get his name from the doc? Uh, J.B. Rowland works on the local newspaper. Reporter? No, has charge of distribution and circulation. Also takes care of the morgue. Uh, back issue files. Oh, that'd put him in touch with Waterman on the circulation end. And his taking care of the back issues might fit, too. That might have told him who Waterman really was. Hey, that's right. Fishing through some old back issues, he might have read about the robbery and Waterman's conviction. Maybe seen a picture of Waterman and recognized it. That'd make him get friendly. He'd know the money was never recovered and that Waterman didn't have it on hand or he wouldn't be running a newsstand and living like he did. You think he told Waterman what he knew and finally talked him into a deal? Or do you think maybe he forced him into it? When we see him, we'll ask him. There's the door, Jace. Apartment 2B. You gonna knock? Yeah. Yeah? Who is it? Special delivery. Well, I'm not dressed. You better slip it under the door. You got a sign for it. Oh? Okay. Oh, have you got a pencil? All right, Roland. Open it all the way. I'll open it. I'll open your skull. Right, watch him, Jason. Stay away from that desk. You're not taking me. Give me that gun. Oops. Oh, oh, my, my arm. Oh. Yeah. Same arm Waterman's dog chewed on, huh? I, I don't know what you're talking about. No? Just the same you went right for a gun. Brand new gun at that. Like you were expecting you might have trouble. Come on, get up. Oh, Why'd oh. you kill him? You want all the money instead of a split? Money. <laughs> money. Yeah, where's the money? What'd you do with it? What did I do with it? I worked on him for months until he trusted me. Then we went down to the river, but we couldn't find the place. Couldn't remember all the landmarks. He couldn't see, and after 16 years, he couldn't remember. He couldn't remember. I went crazy. I planned on it so much, I went crazy then, so I'll... If I had the money, I, I could have gotten away. Without the money, I had to come back here so they wouldn't be looking for me. All right, Roland. <laughs> Go get some clothes on. <laughs> Looks like that 40000 is really gone for keeps, Chase. Yeah. Buried in a rock ridge somewhere near the Rio Grande. That's money that never bought anybody anything. I feel sorry for that dog, Chase, breaking his heart and dying like he did. Funny thing about a dog, a dog never passes judgment. He just sticks right to the finish, whether you're good or bad, worth it or not. I'll help Roland get a jacket on. Then we can take him in. For the murder of James Waterman, alias Joseph Wilson, J.B. Roland was convicted and sentenced to Huntsville Penitentiary for a period of 99 years. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Peggy Weber, Herb Bygren, Ed Begley, Earl Keane, Tom Holland, and Tom McKee. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tomorrow night, NBC will present Parallel 38, a dramatization of the work of the Red Cross during the current crisis with Raymond Massey in the starring role. Brigadier General David Sarnoff will explain the needs of the Red Cross during the 1951 fund campaign. So listen tomorrow to Parallel 38 and let your heart guide your hand when you give to the Red Cross. The Telephone Hour welcomes Yusi Bierling tomorrow on NBC.